The things that have been good from design and technology is that you can create and you design. And I want to hold on to some of those things where you still are being creative and designing with food, um, whilst also making a greater emphasis on the, on the culinary skills and the practical skills and having the confidence to try ingredients out. Um, today we're cooking pavlova with eggs and basically a meringue with um, cream and fruit on top. going to hold it safe, so it needs a little bit longer. Alright, so that's, you, can, you can see it's not sliding out now, so the egg white's not sliding out, so that's really good. That's ready, you can start to add the sugar. We're making it all um, on the side, like extra, so it builds up. We just made the dough for the pasta, and now we're putting it through the machine to make it thinner. Yeah. You have to do it through all these stages, because otherwise it, the yeah, pasta will split. Thin and it won't it. turn out as good. And as you get to like the seventh stage, it gets really hard to like turn it. It gets stiffer and stiffer. Okay, we're on to the last stage now. And then if it sticks, you can put some flour on like there, so it doesn't stick. First you get the garlic and you go like that and press down on it so you can get the flavour out. And then you chop it. And you try to do it fine so you don't get like garlic bits in your food. Yeah. That's going to be the sauce that goes on top of the um, cannelli. And I'm mixing in the ricotta with the spinach to make the filling. By chopping all those little bits off, you're just wasting it. So try and keep as much of the fruit on as you can. <laughs> We're just designing our fruit to see how it's going to look. In year nine, you're seeing the students make the, a roux and a tomato-based sauce, and they're making cannelloni, so they're looking at flavourings for the stuffing and then flavourings for the sauces to make a cannelloni. I think lots of students might know, know what lasagna is and might have made a lasagna, but they probably don't know what a cannelloni is, and they're probably not likely to make cannelloni at home. After we made the spinach and ricotta, we left it to cool down a bit, and now we're just feeling it. You can use your fingers. It's a bit sticky. Mm -hmm. Um, just putting the sauce on to give it extra flavour and so that the calamari can cook better. Just the tomato, onions, a bit of garlic, basil, pepper to give it a bit more flavour. You just spoon that onto the middle. All right, and then you can use a palette knife to spread it around, and then you're going to decorate the middle of it with the fruit. Okay. Can you put a little bit more in? Yeah. <laughs> Done. In primary school, the students are learning a lot about where food comes from, and I'd like to pick up on that when you go into secondary school and look a little bit more about well, how is the food made or what is the food made from. Um, so, it's, so that's why they're doing a, a, a pasta from scratch and also a, a pesto from scratch as well, is looking at well, what, are, what are these foods made from, because they are foods that you would normally just buy. We made the pesto with basil and a few pine nuts and what else did we make through? Oil. Oil and, and parmesan. Parmesan, we put it through the... It's called blender. Blender. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that much in this. <laughs> Sorry, it's all sticking. It's got everything. Pesto. I think sometimes students are surprised that when they've made something, just how good it is, and it tastes great, it looks great. No one's sitting here thinking, I want any salt to put, you know, I want to put salt on it, which I think is really good. It's about that realisation that actually, this is um, this is this is really cool, and, it, and it, you know I can come up with some really great stuff, and I don't have to use you know ready-made meals or processed meals all the time, and I've got the, and I, I have the ability to do it. Now let's try any. Now Okay, I want some more. I just want the strawberries.
Well, food technology is more about designing food products. And actually, most children are not going to need to know some of those skills. What they are going to need to know is how to look after themselves and how to cook, how to fend for themselves, how to feed their family. Have you decided what you're going to make the soup out of? Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, potato, onion and carrots. Cooking is much more about that. It's much more about how you look after yourself nutritionally and also getting those skills about how you think about how you put foods together and what happens when you put them into the oven. One thing we're never going to do, give up, is eating. So this is my filling. I put rice in it, tomato sauce and the inside of the courgette and some cheese. Now I'm going to put it in the pepper and then I put this bit just to make it look a little bit nicer. I cooked one before, I wasn't really pleased with it <laughs> uh, because it was the first time. Now I'm filling in the courgettes. Last time I put lots of cheese and lots of salt, it didn't taste really nice. <laughs> so this time I'm trying to improve it. I'm sweating my vegetables now because I've cut them up. Um, let's just get them a bit soft. Um, there's carrot, potato, garlic, onion and meat. So most of them, I don't know what they are. I'm just smelling them and thinking it would be best for my soup. So I'm going to take this. I'll take this. Some mixed herbs. It smells really nice with all the herbs and all the seeds in it mixed mix together. Watch it doesn't start sticking. Andrea is my salvation because I am a deputy. I do sometimes run through the door almost, you know, on fire. So for me, she's a huge asset. I couldn't manage without her because she, you know, she keeps my lessons together really, <laughs> or keeps me together. <laughs> What I really love is being with the kids, because when you see them achieve something, they make something, because some of them don't even believe they can cook. I can't do that, miss. And then they make it, and they're so excited that they've achieved it, and they go home and take it to their families, and they're all they're really proud of themselves. Andrea, have you used this one before? Because it's locked in place, but it's still not working. That's okay, it looks like this is cooked, okay? And you could have a little tidy up saying far, okay? Okay. Right. Cooker top as well, because look, more soup on the cooker than we've got in this in the pan. Okay. Okay. They're ready because if you feel them, they um they aren't stiff anymore. Um, and um, they're golden brown on top, that means they're ready. <laughs> what we're looking at really is presentation of food. So if when you have a, some food put in front of you, how do you recognise that that's good? And this one? Mine, um, it has potato, carrot, onions, a little bit of leeks and a little bit of tomato. Okay. <laughs> and garlic. Taste a little bit of each one, okay? And think about... What you think about the flavour? So, nice. so we're really into thinking about how you know students can develop their taste and be adventurous. We want them to be adventurous. How, what's it like? Do you want to put that one down that end? Let's try that one. Oh, really nice. We have a very good DT department, but not uh, with any uh, cooking equipment. But at the moment, we have absolutely nothing. But we're very fortunate to have a school, you know, 50, 100 yards away, who um, have allowed us to share their, their resources. 10, 15 boys go over there every Tuesday, every Wednesday, and take part in cooking. They, they get to uh, take their food away. Some of them have been inspired to want to go on and become chefs, so it's been a marvellous thing. Parliament Hill School and William Miller School have had a, a good relationship for a long time. We've just written it into our, as part of our community plan that we would teach the cooking club, and then developing on that, we're going to start doing the licence to cook um, materials with, the, with those boys. I'm going to dice it because um, it will be easier to cook because of its size. Actually, I, I really enjoy cooking. 
I came since I'm um, year 10 last year. I enjoy cooking a lot, yeah. I don't, I don't cook as much as he does, but I wish I had a now in school because that is a skill that everybody needs in the later life. Because it's not so much about the coursework, it's quite cool because we're going to get a little bit more creative. And so today what we're doing is muslin and curry and we're making the curry paste up from scratch. I'm just preparing the paste right now. I've got some of the peppers and I put it into the wok with oil and then uh, as I was cooking it releases the, all the flavours out um, so it, the, it opens up and then uh, once that's all done I pour it into the side, mush around so it becomes fine and then I chop out the rest of the peppers and the seeds and garlic and everything and then uh, put it all together and make it into a paste. As soon as I've put all the ingredients in I still have to add um, the shrimp paste, uh, some lime and the lime skin juice. Uh, lemongrass, a little bit more, peppers, it will come all together nicely, mixed with the chicken and potatoes and then it will make the curry. We have a laugh, don't we boys? Yeah. Sometimes they're rascals, they don't clean up very well. <laughs> the boys are actually really good cooks. They really get into it, don't you? We all like work together, help each other out, like get each other equipment, help each other wash them up and stuff. And then like it's all just teamwork really. It's just like all communicating and everything, so it just helps and it make everything easier. The smell is exotic. There's a lot of flavour inside it, and I can I can smell it. it goes right up my nose, and like, it goes straight up there. Like it can could, it make, it could make it all water, uh, eyes water. It's much better, I prefer um, making my own paste because the pride like that you cook to yourself, everything's done by yourself, so no one can else take, can take credit, so that's what I enjoy about it. I put onion, garlic and some star anise as well. Ready? Go. Yeah, it's quite nice, but hopefully the yeah the finished dish will smell perfect. Yeah, it smells amazing. Actually, from outside you can smell smell the food. It smells very good. Basically, we've uh, put the coconut milk in. Uh, we've also put stock in. We've also got leaves and the, uh, and the paste. And then now after we've done all that, mixed with the chicken, the potatoes, and everything, it's all gonna uh, it's gonna get thicker eventually because it will evaporate into the air. It's something you know which is obviously very trendy at the moment with all the celebrity chefs and everything, and, and, and boys really want to get, get involved in it. Um, you know, the, the, the first time we offer it is, is in year 10, and often we have 60, 70 boys who want to have some cooking experience, and it's only been through Parliament Hill that we've had this opportunity. That's so funny. They're real jokers, you guys, aren't they? It's something that all schools need to um, you know, kind of think about. It would be an amazing thing to introduce um, lower down in the school. I think we're some way off it, but it'd be nice if you could come back in a few years' time to see um, you know, cooking thriving at William Ellis School as well as at Parliament Hill. Because it's a twilight club, we don't have a lot of time for hanging around, so, and, and the boys just want to go. We're usually here till about 5.30 anyway, so instead of doing tastings, we do a little takeaway service and put it in a, in a foil container, and they can reheat it when they get home. <laughs>